Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our immunology discussion. In the last videos, we talked about type 1, type 2, type 3, hypersensitivity reactions. Today, we'll talk about type 4. Unlike the previous three types, type 4 has nothing to do with antibodies. Type 4 is cell-to-cell -cell killing, cell-mediated immunity. That's why the hero here is the T lymphocyte. With that said, now let's get started. Hypersensitivity, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Type 1, immediate, but type 4 is delayed. Okay, how about type 2? Cytotoxic, look at this. Type 2 is cytotoxic. And type 3, you have free antibodies. What do you mean by free? I mean the antibodies are floating in the plasma. They are floating in your blood. They are not bound to cells. They are not cyto like type 1. Also, you can describe type 3 by three words. Serum immune complexes. Hypersensitivity. Which one is the fastest? Type 1. Which one is the slowest? Type 4. Can you describe type 1 in few words? Sure. Immediate. Anaphylactic. IgE. Mast cells. They rupture. Pew. They degranulate. Pew. Releasing histamine. And histamine can give you the symptoms of an anaphylactic shock. How about type 2? Cy2 toxic. What do you mean? I mean, I have antibodies. Okay. These antibodies are bound to antigens. Okay. And this happens on the surface of the cell. The cell is the Cy2. That's why type 2 is Cy2 toxic. Okay. How about type 3? 3 is free. You have antigens and antibody complexes. Same as 2? Yeah, but with one difference. The big difference is this happens in the blood. And after this, since they are hanging around in the blood, the antigen-antibody complex can end up being deposited in the blood, causing vasculitis, in your joints, causing arthritis, in your kidney, causing nephritis, etc, etc, etc. In type 1, type 2, type 3, we talked about antibodies like IgE, like the antibody that is cytotoxic, like the antibody that's freely floating in the blood. But type 4 has nothing to do with antibodies. Type 4 has nothing to do with the humoral immune system. Type 4 is about T lymphocytes, cell-mediated immunity. No antibodies? Heck no. The T lymphocytes are super sophisticated. They communicate with each other via cytokines, which include the interleukins, which is the internet of the leukocytes. This is also the story of making a granuloma, and this takes time. Here is a quick overview of the four types of hypersensitivity. Type 1, immediate, okay, within minutes, all right? Hemoral immunity, which means I'll see antibodies, yes such as IgE, immediate, hemoral, preformed antibodies. Remember, IgE is ew. What do you mean by ew? Allergy, anaphylaxis, atopy, asthma, eosinophilia, ew, bee sting, ew. How about type 2? Type 2 is cytotoxic, okay. We have an antigen-antibody complex. We're on the surface of the cell. And these antibodies could inhibit the target most of the time, or they could stimulate the target in one case only. That's why some crazy textbooks define this specific type as type 5 hypersensitivity. But this is a very bizarre classification that only lasted for 5 minutes, and then they went back to classifying hypersensitivity as four types. Can they inhibit the target? Sure, they can cause inflammation and cell dysfunction. Inflammation is seen in anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease, also known as good pasture syndrome, rheumatic fever, hyperacute transplant rejection. This is how your body rejects organs. Or they can cause cell dysfunction such as myasthenia gravis and pemphigus vulgaris. My muscles are in trouble, my skin is toast. They stimulate the target organ only in one case, which is the case of grave disease. I have antibodies against the receptor. Okay, what kind of receptor? This is the receptor waiting for the TSH. So it's called the TSH receptor. Okay, but these antibodies will come and stimulate the target. Have you ever heard of antibodies that stimulate the target? No, antibodies are weapons of destruction. Now, this is an exception. These are antibodies that stimulate the target. Leading to what? Well, it's as if TSH is binding to its receptor. Oh, so a similar effect? Yeah. What does TSH do? It tells the thyroid gland to secrete tons of thyroid hormone. 
So Graves' disease, in a sense, is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. How about type 3? Type 3 is also antigen-antibody complex in a different location, floating freely in the plasma. Okay. This is the cause of serum sickness, which is a diffuse and acute reaction. Or the Arthas reaction. It's not diffuse. It's very localized in one spot on your skin. And it's not that acute. Arthas is subacute. Serum sickness is generalized. Arthas is localized. Serum sickness is acute. Arthas is subacute and subcutaneous. Love it. Subacute, subcutaneous. Type 3 is also the tragic story of the nasty immune-mediated vasculitis when these antigen antibody get deposited into the wall of the vessel. This is vasculitis. They can also get stuck into your kidney. This is called immune complex mediated nephritis or into your joints immune complex arthritis this is what happens in lupus this is what happens in rheumatoid arthritis and gazillion other diseases how about type 4 type 4 is the most delayed three days or about 72 hours or slightly less slightly more this is cell mediated i'm not gonna send antibodies to destroy no i myself i'm gonna go and kill that bacteria face to face. I'm gonna have a strong word with this tuberculosis face to face, cell to cell, cell mediated or cellular immunity. If I can kill the stupid invader, I will destroy it. How will you destroy it? Well, we are T lymphocytes. We have T cytotoxic toxic cells. We kill. Okay. But if I can't kill it, well, at least I can surround it in a granuloma. This granuloma can have caseous necrosis, such as the caseating granuloma of tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, or it could be non-caseating, basically any other granuloma is going to be non-caseating. A famous example is sarcoidosis. How to make a granuloma is a story that we'll talk about soon, but basically CD4 T lymphocytes will secrete interferon gamma, which will stimulate the macrophages to make the granuloma. Here is type 1, remember the atopy, the asthma, the anaphylaxis, and the bee sting. It's all about histamine and leukotrienes and eosinophils and ew. Type 2 is the cytotoxic. We have complement mediated and non complement mediated. The complement one is the rheumatic fever, antiglomerular basement membrane antibody, and hyperacute organ transplant rejection. Notice the involvement of antibodies everywhere because we're still in type 2. But when we go to type 4, no antibodies whatsoever. Examples of the no complement type 2, you have autoimmune hemolytic anemia, autoimmune thrombocytopenia, hemolytic disease of the newborn, this is the ADCC mechanism, and you can have cell surface receptors targeted by antibody. Antibody that inhibits myasthenia, antibody that simulates graves. Type 3 could be generalized or localized. Generalized, it's not your doctor's fault, it is your doctor's fault. Not your doctor's fault, fibrinoid necrosis happens with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and adult onset Stills disease. The doctor's fault is the serum sickness reaction. The doctor gave you anti-serum, which means serum from another organism that contains antibodies. Your body developed antibodies against those antibodies. That's the serum sickness reaction. You get urticaria, arthralgia, proteinuria, and fever. One to two weeks later. One to two, one plus two equals three. The localized is King Arthur because he's local. That's the Arthur's reaction, post-vaccine skin reaction. Type 1, type 2, and type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. We're dealing with antibodies. We're dealing with humoral immunity for the most part. But here... In type 4, we're talking about cell-mediated immunity for the most part. It's not antibodies, it's not B lymphocytes, it's not hemoral, it is cell-mediated. It is T lymphocytes, that's why it's delayed. Are you talking about CD4 T lymphocytes or CD8? It could be either. Oh, okay, tell me the story. Here is the antigen presenting cells, presenting the antigen to the T lymphocytes, specifically the CD4. The CD4 secrete interleukin-2. The interleukin is the internet of the leukocytes. This is how they communicate with each other. Now, the CD4 positive is very active. It's going to secrete interleukin-12. Also, the macrophages secrete interleukin-12. Don't forget that the macrophages could act as an antigen-presenting cell. The end result is interleukin-12 activating my Th1, T helper 1. Is this the one that help? 
the sister or the neighbor. It helps the sister. It helps other T lymphocytes. It does not help the humoral immunity. It helps the sisters, the cell-mediated immunity. It can also secrete interferon gamma to activate macrophages. If the organism is weak, destroy it by phagocytosis. But what if the organism is nasty and virulent and strong like tuberculosis? If I cannot kill it and eat it, let me at least surround it in a granuloma. The idea that the T helper 1 CD4 T lymphocytes secretes interferon gamma to activate the macrophage is one of the most commonly tested facts on any exam. Never ever forget this. Type 4, we're talking about cell mediated immunity. T lymphocytes, CD4 cells, especially the Th1, secrete interferon gamma to activate macrophages. Low virulence organism, phagocytosis, high virulence organism, make a granuloma, such as tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioide mycosis, or sarcoidosis. In this case, the granuloma is not against a foreign invader. Okay, medicosis, how can we run circles and make a granuloma around the mycobacterium tuberculosis or the tubercle bacilli? Let's go! Let's go! Here are mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli. We will surround them. With whom? With macrophages. Macrophages are here known as epithelioid histiocytes. Epithelioid because they look like epithelial cells. Histiocytes because they are in the tissue. They are not floating freely in the bloodstream. When they are floating freely in the bloodstream, they are called monocytes. But here they are stuck in tissues. Histiocytes. Don't forget, who activated the macrophages? T helper 1, are they CD4 or CD8? CD4. T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes? T lymphocytes. They will also come to run circles around tuberculosis. Something weird will start to happen. Many of these macrophages will join forces combined together to make this humongous, multinucleated giant cell so we have the stupid TB here, and then we have our own macrophages called epithelioid cells or epithelioid histiocytes. Then we have the CD4 T lymphocytes. And don't forget, some of the macrophages will change into multinucleated giant cells. Is this an acute destruction? No, the whole purpose of the granuloma is that I could not destroy the bacteria acutely. Therefore, this is a chronic thing, which means you will need plasma cells. Okay, they can come too. More importantly, fibroblasts will come. What do fibroblasts do? They lay down some butimus, fibrous tissue like this. Oh, okay so that you can surround the tuberculosis. You can imprison the TB inside this doozy granuloma. As long as your immune system remains strong, the TB will be in prison for life. The moment your immunity drops, you're in trouble. Hashtag TB reactivation. That's why TB reactivation is common in the elderly, in the immunocompromised, in HIV patients, in patients with uncontrolled chronic diabetes, in patients taking chemotherapy, in patients receiving organ transplants, in patients taking immunosuppressive drugs such as the biologics, etanercept, adalimumab, infleximab, etc. And then what's gonna happen? Oh, let's cause some necrosis. Okay, cell death then. Yeah, let's kill some of those cells. All right, that's some necrosis for you. Okay, what kind of necrosis? Is it coagulative necrosis? Nope, this is caseating necrosis. I know it might sound cheesy, but that's because it is. Caseating means like cheese. When you see caseating granuloma like this, you know that there was probably an organism there. Could be tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis. But that's not true with sarcoidosis. There is no organism in the middle in sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is your body attacking itself. Who else is gonna explain to you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? No. Give me examples of caseating granuloma with caseous cheesy necrosis in the center, tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis. Basically anything else is going to be non-caseating granuloma. After this video, I will release a video that includes the four types together and it will be included in my physiology playlist. It's time for clinical examples. Type 4, T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes, tuberculin skin test. This is for tuberculosis, the granuloma. 
It's for transplant rejection, such as acute rejection, chronic rejection, but not the hyperacute organ transplant rejection. Touching, what do you mean? Contact dermatitis. This is the story of poison ivy. This is the story of wearing a new nickel watch on your wrist and developing a rash on the same wrist and the rash looks exactly like a watch. This is the story of trying new makeup and three days later you developed a reaction exactly where you applied the makeup. This is also the story of graft versus host disease. If you like this video, you will adore my renal physiology course available at medicosisperfectionaries.com. Comes with 10 videos, 10 cases with notes, of course. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course. Learn everything you need to know about insulin, the different types of insulin, how to calculate the dose of insulin, and much more. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.